Hey guys, well, we're ready to do some painting. And yeah, as you can see, I said I was going to change things back there. I was just running out of room, so we're still filling in. I got a few things to go yet, but starting to change things around a little bit. At least I got a little more space than I had. All right, for painting this week. Now, a few weeks ago, I did one with a yellow perch because that was one of the recommendations or one of the guys asked during the community tabs. I wanted to know what were people looking for. Another suggestion at that point in time was some crawdad patterns. And I think it was a red, a green, and I think another one. I don't remember the third pattern. But I thought, that's what we're going to do. Now, I did a red crawdad pattern uh, maybe a month or so ago. And I'm going to really try to remember. I'll put a link in the description for this one that shows the painting of the red one in case anybody missed it and is interested. But we're going to come back. We're going to do at least the next two weeks. We're going to do crawdad patterns for the next two weeks. And then we'll see where we go after that. We're going to use the lipless crankbait. This is the a grave digger style. Uh, I really like the lipless crankbait early in the spring when that water first opens up and we're looking at upper 30s, low 40s. First time we're getting out in the spring, I love a lipless crankbait and I love a crawdad pattern, red being one of them. So we'll go with the lipless crankbaits and we'll do the crawdad patterns here for the next two weeks. So stick with me, we'll get started. All right, this will be our first in our series of uh, crawdad pattern that we're going to paint. For this one, I've got it already painted the base white. I think we're going to go with copper, and we're going to go with a copper blue. Uh, kind of looked through some of the books, looked at some of the different colors of crankbaits that are out there, excuse me, out of uh, crawdad patterns that are out there. And I noticed one that was a copper with a blue belly. So I thought, that's good. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to use the Createx Pearlized Copper. And we'll use the Createx Transparent Blue for the belly. So let me get the gun loaded up for the first color. And we'll get started. All right. As always with these, we'll start at the belly. Work our way up. So we're just going to turn this thing over. And we're just going to hit them light blue. And as you can see... Normally I've got my clamps that I'm using, but this time around we're using the helping hands. And uh, there's no lip on these, so you don't have a whole lot of choice. You've got to come up with another way to hang on to them. All right, there we go. There's our light blue on the belly. Let me uh, dry that, and then we'll move on. All right, we got our blue on the belly done. Let's move on to the pearlized... Createx copper, and we're just going to shoot it down the back, let it come down on the sides, as we do every other time. We just want to get it so it kind of blends down there a little bit. It's not really, you know, I, I say blend, but you know, at the same time, we dried the blue, so it, it really kind of tapers down. You can't really say it blends, but it will taper down. There we go. Like that. Leaves just a little bit of that belly coming up. Now, we're going to need to get a real good dry on this because we're going to come back now to put the crawl pattern on. So that means we're going to be doing a lot of touching on it to get the crawl pattern. So we're going to get this really dry before we step in and do anything else. We are ready to put on our crawl pattern. And we're going to do this with opaque Createx Opaque Black is what I'm going to use for that. And if you haven't watched before, this is the way I do my crawl pattern. A little piece of plastic. I like this because I can see through it so I can see where I'm at, where I'm locating my deal. And this works both ways. I put an R on it for the right side, an L on it for the left side, so I can use it for both sides. So what we're going to do is I've got some black loaded in the gun and I've taken we were shooting everything at about 40 pounds of pressure I've moved the pressure down to 15 pounds of pressure we're going to just hold this up 
Now, when you're shooting on a stencil for a stencil, what you want to do is shoot on the stencil and just let the bleed over part be the part that's getting on the lure. Again, with this clear, I like it. My first one right here is going right in the middle of the line tie. I'm going to hold this right in the middle so I know that's where my very first one is. It'll be the same on the other side. Alright, we're just going to come back. There's one. I don't know how much I'm blocking this off for you guys, but... There's two. Got a little heavier on the first one, a little lighter on the second. That's why they're custom painted lures. They don't all come out the same. That's what I tell everybody. What you want to do is give it air pressure, but don't pull back as far here. Put out less paint, push it down to give out air, but then barely pull back a little so you're not putting as much paint out. You know, we got three. I got a long lure there. Let's go for four. What the heck, right? There we go. There's four of them. Now we're going to go on the other side. Do the other side. But we want to make sure we line them up. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to come right across here. As you can see, now that I come over here, I can't see where the lines are on the other side. So what I'm going to do is come right on top here. Take my deal and hold it. Come right. Well, we know that one's in the middle of the line tie. We don't need that one. So we're just going to come right here. Hit that just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Now, when I turn it around, I can see my marks that I left from the other side. I know the first one's going to be here. So now we're on the left side, so we're going to turn it around. Now we do left side. Let's see which one I'm going to do this so you can see it in the camera, because I'm going to have to turn this thing completely around like this. That way I can see what I'm doing, and maybe you can too. Go right in the middle of that line, tie it with our first one here. That's showing up, and we'll see. There's one. There's two. There's three. And one more time. And there's four. So there we have it. Four on this side and four on that side. All right. There's a craw. We've got that pattern. You know, the other week I did a, put a splatter on one, and I think I want to put a splatter on this one too before we do the eye and uh, the top coat. So let me get some other stuff ready and we'll do a splatter on this. For our splatter, I'm going to go with Createx Pearlized Plum. So a pearl plum for the splatter. Just put a little bit down here on the paper plate. Get my old toothbrush in there. Yeah, a little ahead of time on the paper there. Oh yeah, I like that. Let's flip that thing over. Let's do that again. Need to load a little more on. There we go. There we got it. How about this side again? Yeah, let's give him a little more. Let's get crazy with the splatter this week, huh? There we go. All right, I like that. There we go. 
I think now we are set set of eyes and uh, a top coat we'll see what we got well there we go guys there is the copper blue crawl now I, where I kind of got the ideas for these uh, Bass Pro has a what they call a phantom copper blue crawl which is sort of like this and Berkeley had one I think it was called the Table Rock Crawl. And it was basically kind of copper with the blue. So that's where I came up with the idea here. Uh, of course, I like to put my splatter on, make a little difference sometime. But that's our first in a series of crawdad patterns on the lipless crankbait. We'll be back next week. We're going to do another one. So until then, thanks for sticking with me. Subscribe to our channel if you would. Hope to see you again real soon.